This is so paradoxical. It's so paradoxical because you want freedom. When I was seeking, I wanted freedom so badly. And I heard about this thing called liberation that like non-duality seemed to offer the solution, right? Some called it freedom, some called it liberation. The, there's nobody, there's no one inside that body to be free. So already, already there's no one in the body to do anything. So worrying just happens. Laughing just happens. Nervous thoughts just happen. But they don't belong to anyone because there's no, there's no one inside the body. It's like, it's just saying there's already no problem because me is problem, problem, solution, problem, solution. That's the, that's the life of the me. But that's, that's the hamster wheel. And it could be fun and exciting for a while, but can also not be. So now the next, right, the next logical question is, well, Michael, what should I do? Oh, you're muted, Charles. Go ahead, unmute. Yeah. Yeah, the search uh, can be a, uh, to reinforce the me. That is the, that is the dilemma. <laughs> it uh, and so it's almost as if the search is there to show that uh, you're not getting any place in the search and the and the frustration and the kind of negativity that the results from that search is the trigger that that one needs in order to realize that. Uh, that there's no one, there's no one, no one here. And uh, so it's really a paradoxical thing, this search. It's a, and like we've talked about before, you know, the search is also this, it's yeah. this, you know, yeah. and it, it's significant. Wait, wait, just a second, Joe. That's a thing to notice. See, the, the, the belief yeah. is that it's me. I think I'm seeking. It's not you. You're not seeking. No, you're not. This is. But you looking, think you are. Yeah. This is this is looking for this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a it's a 
paradoxical dilemma is what it is. Uh, but it's apparently how things work there in that in that stage of, of life for a search. I did it. I did it for a long, long time, you know. And uh, no, you didn't. No, I didn't. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I thought I did it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for laughing, Peter. <laughs> It reminds me of the Chinese torture, te t torture yeah. test. Yeah. You know, you're like pulling and the more you pull, the tighter it gets. It's in the relaxing yeah. and collapsing but, of it that you're free. You know what though? The thing is, the, the, you, Joan, you could say the, the me guys is made of seeking. Yeah. So really, and where's Alice? That was one thing that touched me about Nkosi. He had such, and I think this is what you picked up on too. He had such compassion for the me that was seeking, right? He was like, it's okay. Yeah. You're muted, you're muted, Alice. Not that I need to repeat this, but I will, but it was such a blast of um, love that was coming at me for an hour um, that I honestly have not experienced an hour like that in my life. It was, it was just, just totally. Thank you. Now, this compassion for the me is uh, is important a lot of, in a lot of progressive programs. You know that uh, that people uh, uh, attend, and they're I don't know they're they're as successful in varying degrees, I think. And there has to, but there is a continuing admission that you know that the, you're still in the uh, separation mode. Uh, what you're trying to break out of, but the compassion of the so-called teacher is there to uh, nurse that me along, you know, the, to somehow, and everybody's different, everybody, and we all still have me's, you know, all of our me's are there, and they need certain things, and they need to be understood to where they are, where they've tried to get to, and so on, so some of these so-called teachers uh, uh, accommodate that. But uh, others don't. It's uh, the others feel that there's no accommodation here at all that you need right away to jump in the, into this realization that there's no one here. And this is it. So, uh, a lot of the progressive teachers know that, but they feel that they have a have a have a established a, a nice program that people seem to resonate with, and uh, and may and perhaps is uh, is useful for a lot of people. You know I, what I find, Charles, is something can be useful until it's not. Yeah, and you don't get to decide. No. Something, you'll just be drawn to something for a while, right? And suddenly for no reason, you're finding yourself into something else yeah. or a different, a different speaker. A different path or whatever. Yeah, it just seems to happen, right? All is just happening. There's yeah. no one doing anything. And that's the freedom. When you realize not only is there no one inside you doing anything, there's no one inside anyone else. No. So, so that's the compassion and the love because then you realize the guy at the corner freaking out, there's nobody in there. That's just what's happening. That's his conditioning, he has no choice. It'd be like computer programming. Whatever mm -hmm. you feed in the computer, it has to act out. So his thoughts are real to him. His beliefs are real to him. So what choice does he have? So maybe the no compromise way 
which is the other way. There's no compromise. When, it, when the student, so to speak, uh, seems to indicate that they don't understand they're in separation, it's, it's, uh, they're kind of harshly treated. You might say that. Maybe it's not so harsh, but it, it might seem that way to them to say that, that uh, to try to just jog the, uh, the person into uh, the realization that you're looking for. Well, here there's no sales attempt whatsoever, right? It's pure resonance. So there's no logic, you know, I'm not, I'm not giving you an argument why you, you should believe me, you know, it's really up to each individual to feel the truth for me of it's, there's no separation. Yeah. Yeah. a question about terminology. Before I came across non-duality, we often talked about ego. Is ego and me synonymous? Are you using that synonymously? Um, I don't use ego. I, I don't think I've used ego. Um, um, I, I actually... you. I would say if you look for the ego, you have as much chance of finding the ego as you do the me. That's what I'm saying. When I say there's no you there, that's the shocking news. If you really, and listen, you can't, you know, this will become clear when it becomes clear. You, can, you can't, for, the me can't like force itself to dissolve. The me can't do that. It's just, you can hear like when we say there's already no one there, okay? So I say there's already no one in your body and you can hear that maybe uh, 50 times or something. And then suddenly already there's no me there. And when you hear it for some reason, you're like, Oh, already there's no me here, meaning no me here. I could have discovered this last week. But it's really unbelievable. You can't believe this, that there's no one inside that body doing anything is not a belief. How's a me gonna believe there's no one in there if the me thinks it's in there? I guess for me, the catch is, you know, if I stub my toe, something hurts. You know, there's a, there's a, a sensation. Yeah, me too. There's a sensation and in the automatic response is my toe as opposed to a toe or something on this vessel got, you know, now there's a sensation there. Yeah. You know, and just to untangle all that. You can't. There's no one to untangle it. it there's like there's I'm already. Just... But the key word, Joan, uh, right? Already there's no one there to do anything. Already. God, yeah, it's before that's... thought. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Joan, the, the toe doesn't say anything about of me. No. The toe and, and the sensation doesn't say anything about a Joan. There's a sensation. So, yeah, it doesn't even say anything about hurting. It's just, it's a feeling. And then 
the pattern comes in and says, oh, it's Mo Jones has, is having this experience and it's this and it's that. Yeah, that's when the programming kicks in. <laughs> yeah, but the difference is, right? If I stub my town, it still hurts. I could still cuss, right? I could all, I could hop around and get, a, but it's somehow it's a lot lighter. It's like, it's more comical. Let's ask in Nkosi, welcome. Welcome, Nkosi. Hi. Hi. Hello, everyone. Hi. I do I think that one of the ways to get tripped up is through the pattern. Dan just mentioned patterns, through the patterns that happen. So for example, the way this expresses through the form of the body, right? The Joanna, Joe, is occasionally is a raging lunatic, which will probably get me killed when I, because I frequently do it on New York City subways when condescending, insert explicative here, um, say nasty stuff to me, which I did today. So like, there is a, as much as I, um, am in tune with this teaching or with this belief system or the, whatever. I still have moments like that where I'm like, this me is going to get this body killed. <laughs> I'm ready to leave. So what's the problem? There's a lot of story wrapped up in the, the fight, flight, or freeze, the, the fight response, uh, which I, I, whatever, which in, uh, I don't even know how to speak. I'm just gonna talk like a regular person. There is a lot of story wrapped up in the, the rage response that comes out and yeah. how that's bad, it's inappropriate, I'm gonna get hurt someday, like I shouldn't respond like that, why can't I be a calm, normal person, you know? Uh, and there's a lot of story and it gets, and, and a lot of um, uh, uh, um, emotional feeling in the body and it gets really hard in those moments to extrapolate, to, to go out and to get back to the teaching of like, that's just what's happening in that moment. That's just what's flowing through in that moment. Like the attachment comes back. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I explained it well. I still don't, but where's the, what's the problem part? If that's what's I, happening, right? Because this teaching isn't about there's a right way or a wrong way. It's saying there's just this way. So if ra ra <laughs> raging lunatic Joe comes out on New York subway, <laughs> first of all, public <laughs> service announcement, stay out of the subways. But <laughs> no, then that's just what's happening, but it's not you doing it. Right. Actually, interestingly enough, as I was thinking about the incident afterwards, the thought appeared, you say rage like it's a bad thing. Well, also, uh, it's also your interpretation. What, what one person calls rage may be nothing, right? Someone else goes, wow, you really, you know, you really kept your cool. And inside you were <laughs> thinking, Oh man, I look like an idiot. I just, you know, I'm not, I don't look very spiritual right now. I didn't look spiritual at all. <laughs> it was not a vision for you. Come on, you have to tell us what happened. <laughs> I, let me, I'm going to try to do this without getting too long winded, but I was trying to get, I was trying to add money into a Metro card and a young man was standing in line and he said, lady, do you mind if I take that machine and just do it really quickly? I'm running late for um, a meeting and you know, New Yorkers, New Yorkers function much more quickly than the way you are right now. 
And just as the, and I was like, my card is in the machine. No, I'm not going to stop. And then the guy in front who he was, there was another guy working on the second machine and, and he walked away. So the, the gentleman just walked right up to the second machine. And I looked at him and now my father taught me to swear like a sailor. And what came out of my mouth in the next 30 seconds was a bunch of words I'm not going to say because we're being recorded about how I'm a native New Yorker and I was born here and you can add a lot of F-bombs to what I'm saying right now. I'm a native New Yorker. I was born here. I know what it means to operate quickly. I was trying to get something done and that he was incredibly rude. And he's like, you're being disrespectful to me. And I'm like, you were disrespectful to me first. And Keep in mind, I'm the one swearing, he's not. Okay, add an F-bomb in front of every, every word I just said. Um, and he's like, you're going to regret your actions. You need to look at how you're behaving. And I'm like, you're gonna regret your actions. <laughs> and he's walking away and I am, I'm a crazy person. Sounds like a and comedy. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, not really, it's, I mean, not. like, it's like, a, it's, you'd see it on a sitcom. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, wait a second, hold on. So doesn't it feel a lot lighter, your story right now? It does feel lighter when I tell it. The story in my head though, is if anybody I knew saw me, they, I would be so embarrassed. Because keep in mind, this is not the first time this has ever, I, I mean, this happens. I, I, the me does this often. So what, what do you think we should do about it? I don't think there's anything to do. I just think it's the way this expresses. <laughs> so I have a question. If this happened to the Dalai Lama or some really spiritually evolved being that you know, how do you think they would handle that? I feel like everybody else in the spiritual world would be much more calm and mindful. And are you saying if they erupted in anger or if they had that? No, guy it's just, no, if, if, if you were the Dalai Lama and this happened and now you're the Dalai Lama, what would, what would the Dalai Lama do in that situation? Wow. Okay. Hang on there, Joan. Let's, let's. <laughs> no idea. I ask myself that question a lot. You know, I, when I'm when I'm not handling something, what, like, what would the most spiritual person I know, Dalai Lama, one of them, yeah. would laugh? You know, how would how would he handle the situation? Wasn't it, wasn't it what would Jesus do? Yeah, same thing. You know, whoever. But it's well, just I like, like I like when Jones. I, I like Jones because it has more alliteration. What would the Dalai Lama do? That that works well. I I just I'm urged to say I totally <laughs> resonate with. Uh, your reaction, Joe. And if I imagine what Jesus would do or the Dalai Lama, it just reinforces the idea that I shouldn't have, that it was wrong or it should be different. Whereas the message here, if I'm not mistaken, uh, is it's just what happened. It's a big deal. You got mad. I get pissed off all the time. <laughs> big deal. <laughs> That's funny, Peter. I get pissed off all the time. You got a problem with that? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it's, no. It's like, no, you know, no you're perfect. Listen, I got I'm, in Kosi, I'm going to spill the beans. So basically, you know, what do I do when in Kosi and I hooked up for 90 minutes, right? So I'm just sort of like feeling is honestly just his energy. Like I'm just saying, where is he speaking from? And I noticed that he had so much love for the me. And he even said it to me. He said, you know, Michael, it's okay. Mm -hmm. It's okay. I just want to add that when someone is super reactive, and your system is in a state of calm and you generate that bat, you don't respond, react to the anger, but yeah. you, res you just look at it and you respond, changes the whole frequency of the interaction. Mm -hmm. And it's just, 
I mean, I, I find the more I, I work on myself and dial myself down to a more calm frequency, um, my, my feathers don't get ruffled as easily, but living in New York City is a whole nother story. I mean, the energy of that city's... Uh, I guess what I have the... Um, yeah. What would I have the, the hardest time with um, is not... Is telling myself I did it wrong. Is judging myself when I'm doing things, and um, and if I am with this, um, I know I'm not talking the right language. But if this is all there is, and anger appears or anything appears, the problem is not that it appeared. The problem is that I judge it and say it shouldn't. It's not nice, and it's all these adjectives I give to it. So I have. Um, that's what I'm really looking at in, in my life uh, or whatever, whatever is appearing. There's nothing wrong with that. It's when I judge, it's when I judge it, that's the problem, the way I see it. Or because I really think there's a me that's yeah. coming in. And you didn't, so, saying, wow. so I would say it like this. I, I would say that you're, you, you didn't do the thought the thought that is appearing or the feeling that's appearing is just appearing. There's nobody doing anything. It's just happening. And if judgment happens, that also is not you. That's just this judging its own thought. And then if frustration, because I'm supposed to be spiritual on top of all that mess, then that's also just what's happening. Yeah. 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 You, thank you. Yeah, good. Oh, it doesn't mind what you do. The me mind. That's right. Right. Beautiful. Yeah. The me and the me is always going to mind. It's sort of its job in a way. Right? Because the me is looking out for itself. So I'm supposed to notice who gets the bigger slice of pie. That's sort of the me's job in a way, because it thinks it's the body. So since it has to protect the body, it's always going to look in its own best interest. Yeah? Right? Well, not, not always. I was just listening to Paul Hederman, and when he was in you know, he was giving the analogy that uh, when someone has a very expensive motorcycle and about to crash, they do everything to save the bike, but not themselves. <laughs> and he shared that. And there's, you know, I guess an experience he had, you know, but, and I'm like, so it's just the opposite. I mean, so it can go either way, I guess what I'm suggesting. In Kosi. Come on, I'm getting old. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> uh, there isn't anyone uh, to do or not to do anything here. Uh, the me is not already. There's only this. And this knows nothing but itself. Whatever may seem to be going on right now uh, is nothing else but this. Because even before there was never even anything else but this. And there's not even before, there's only this before and after appear in this. So this doesn't even exist. It's existence itself. And there is no one to know this. And no one can talk about this. No one can 
get this. No one can understand this. Because there's only this. <laughs> and this is not even this. It is beyond words. You, you can't describe this. No one can know what this is because there is no one outside of this. So whatever might, be, might seem to be happening right now, it's only this. There's no one seeking. There's no one who's trying to get to a certain place. There's no one who's not understanding anything. There's no one who is about to know this because already there's no one here. There's just this. All, what's, all what is happening or what seems to be happening is this. No matter which direction the me may seem to take, it is this already. This may appear as a negative thought. This may appear as a, as a positive thought. And this may appear as well as anger, frustration, discomfort. It's only this. There's no you who's doing anything here. Already there's no you to know this and there's no you to be enlightened. There's just this. No one can understand this. No one can talk about this. And I'm not talking about it because I'm not already. There isn't anyone here who's talking about anything. There's nothing happening here. And no one can know this because already there's only this. There's nothing else. There's nobody here. So whatever may be said here uh, is only this. There's no, there's no one who can say, there's no one who is outside of this who can say anything about this because there's only this. Exactly the thought that is appearing right now is only this, there's nothing else. Even what seems to be an entity who is trying to be enlightened is this already? Frustration, discomfort, whatever may seem to appear. It's appearing in this as this. There's no you, there's just this. <laughs> So keeping quiet and not keeping quiet is the same. Talking and not talking is the same. Frustration or no frustration, it's all the same because there's only this. <laughs> not getting it and getting it is the same. Because there's only this. It may seem that there is a you who is solid. And that, that, that feeling of being solid is this already. There, there, is, there is no one there. Every sensation, every feeling, every thought that appears is only this. There is no you to own anything. There is no you to own any feeling. There is no you to think about anything. There is no you to know anything. There is just this. Giving up or not giving up is the same. 
It's all this. And no one can know this because there's only this. There's no one. <laughs> being serious about this, trying to know this, and not being serious is the same. It's all this. There isn't a you to know that there's only this. There's just this appearing as a you. So it's all okay. Whatever may seem to arise, it's okay. Frustration, happiness, joy, peace, love, anger. <laughs> it's all this. Oh, I don't understand this. Oh, I do understand this now. It's the same. It's all this. There's nothing outside of this. There's nobody outside of this. And there's no you to be outside of this. Because even outside of this is this as well. So there's no outside. So a question may arise, a thought may arise, no one owns anything. It's just a thought arising, just a feeling arising. It's not for anyone. No, nobody owns it. There's, because there's only this, there's nobody here. These bodies, they just appear in this. These are just bodies, then there's nobody here. It's not even a body. <laughs> it's not even a body. Body is just a label. Nobody knows what that is. What seems to be the body is just a body is just a word. It's not even a body. It's just this. Mm. <sighs> so all is okay. Because when is this? <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing appearing as everything. And it's not even this. You can't know what this is because there's no you to know it already. There's just this. That's wholeness. That's wholeness talking. There's nobody talking there. There's nobody who's asking a question. It's just wholeness, everything. There's no, there's nobody here to know this. And this is not even this. This is beyond words. So whatever question that may arise is only this. There's nobody who's asking a question. There's nobody who has any intention to do anything.
So it's all okay. Uh, that, that's it. <laughs> somehow, somehow realizing you can't know anything is freedom. It's just, it's just not knowable. I, I, you, how is this happening right now? See the miracle, it's already here, but we miss it. So even, even the anger in the subway is the miracle. That's the miracle too. That's this too. It appears as everything, the birds chirping, the dog shit, the wind, someone walking by that you're attracted to, someone walking by that you think is ugly, all of it. The rose and the cactus are both equally this. That's what, when Nkosi says you can't go wrong, it's because you can't escape this. It seems to me like it's all a miracle. Yeah. That it's even happening. Third that's rock it, from the sun. Don't, don't add anything. Stop there, that's it. Anything more is gonna be the me. It's all a miracle. So all of you have the link. Um, I would recommend that you click on the um, fundraiser for Inkosi before I close out because I, I just don't want to close the meeting and then you can't get to the link. So I sent you guys a, a, a link to the fundraiser. You can check it out, read what I wrote and see if you'd like to contribute. Thank you all so, so much for coming. Each and every one of you, love it. Love having you. Inkosi, big thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, words, money, nothing can, it's priceless, really. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, guys. See you, guys. See you.